One. Name the TV film. About the story. This animated film is about Andy and his idiosyncratic toys. Andy Davis is a little boy whose favorite toy, Woody, a cowboy doll, coordinates a mission with the rest of the toys to try and find out what presents Andy is getting from his parents before they all move to a new house. What Andy doesn't know is that his toys come to life when there is no one around. When Buzz Lightyear, a new toy space ranger, appears, Andy is really taken by him. Woody and Buzz dislike each other intensely as they compete for Andy's attention. But when they get into trouble and nearly get lost during the move, they end up supporting each other in an effort to rejoin the family. Two, name the TV film. About the story, this animated film presents the story of a lion cub's journey to adulthood. The cub is the son of a powerful and wise king, but his happy childhood comes to an abrupt end when his evil uncle murders his father and drives him away from the kingdom. The young lion goes into exile in the jungle, where he makes two good friends and lives a carefree life. However, as he gets older, he dreams of his father, who tells him to battle his evil uncle and reclaim his family throne. Three. Name the TV film. About the story, this animated film is about Marlin, a clownfish that lives in the Great Barrier Reef. Marlin loses his son Nemo when a diver captures him and takes him to a dentist's office, where Nemo finds himself in a tank with other sea creatures. Marlin sets off with Dory, a blue tang fish with short-term memory loss, to rescue him. They travel a great distance, running into sharks, jellyfish, and whales, and getting rides on sea turtles. While Marlin and Dory are trying to get to the dentist's office, Nemo and the other sea animals in the dentist's tank are plotting their escape in order to return to Sydney Harbor and their homes. Four, name the TV film about the story. This is a documentary about Bruce Lee's life, career, and untimely death. It reveals a side of Lee unknown to the public, along with the better-known qualities of the celebrity, the man that the world knew. Lee had been working on a new project at the time of his death, ironically titled Game of Death. Rare camera shots have been included in the documentary according to Lee's own script notes in an attempt to convey his ambitions for the project and his frame of mind toward the end of his life. Five, name the TV film. About the story, based on the real life story of prominent mathematician John Nash, this film portrays Nash's struggle with his delusions caused by a mental condition. Nash starts a seemingly promising academic career and makes a remarkable advancement in game theory when he begins having delusions and struggles to maintain control over his mental state. His wife, Alicia, stands by him through years of therapy, and he is eventually able to resume his research and goes on to win the prestigious Nobel Prize.
That was such a fantastic basketball game on TV. You must be joking. Why? Didn't you like it? I thought it was a terrible game. The whole thing was just awful. What didn't you like about it? For one thing, the Bulls' key player missed every easy shot. It really bothered me throughout the entire game. Well, you're right about that. But what else didn't you like? I thought their uniforms were ridiculous. I found the whole idea of the Bulls' players wearing cowhide tops hard to swallow. I don't agree at all. The whole idea is to stand out in the game. The tops are not real cowhide. It's fake cowhide. I'm not sure they were fake. Think of all the poor animals they took the hides from. They must believe that the poor animals are a dime a dozen. Anyway, by the end of the game, I started to doze off. We seem to have very different tastes in basketball and uniforms. Maybe next time we get together, we should just go out to a restaurant. I couldn't agree more. This is Special Places for Special People, your morning show on home and work design. As you can see, we have just walked into the fabulous newly designed interior of an old building in the center of town. The building has been cleared out to form large open plan offices, as well as comfortable glassed-in private offices along the front. We are being met by Mr. Douglas, the CEO of Streamline Airlines, this is the Streamline headquarters, and a lot of money, time, and effort have gone into renovating the building and redesigning the interior. Good morning, Mr. Douglas. Hello, and welcome to our new offices. Thank you. So this is it. How do you feel about the space and the way it has been designed? I am satisfied with the design. It certainly lives up to our expectations aesthetically, and it complements the style of the building and the location. Actually, the initial design was not quite what we needed, and different parts of the building were not optimally utilized. There are so many things one has to take into consideration. Functional issues, such as the number of employees, meeting rooms, facilities for self-catering, mail, insulation, electronic equipment, storage, and a lot more. Naturally, all these other aspects need to be catered to while making the most of the space and lighting, and managing to develop a distinct yet pleasing style that will contribute to a positive atmosphere. It was really frustrating to have to compromise the style of the design in order to meet functional needs at times. We had to reject the second design, which was superb from an aesthetic viewpoint and quite minimalist, because it required staff to squeeze into tiny cubicles along the back out of the way. Then the third design, a modified version of the second one, was really disappointing because it was neither stylish nor fully functional. Finally, the team of architects and decorators that had taken on the project decided to go back to the drawing board and came up with three wonderful options. Naturally, they were presented to the board, and we chose this one. It's a long, arduous process, but in the end, it all comes together. So this was your choice, I take it, including that glass cylinder in the middle of each floor that I suppose goes up to the roof. And I can see plants that are suspended and plants placed in niches all the way to the top. Whose idea was that? Oh, well, that was our staff. We invited them to contribute to our new premises in a way that would signal our green policies, and this is what they came up with. The final choice regarding the design was made by the whole board. I do like it, and I think it is quite efficient in practice. My only complaint about it is that it is not modern enough. One, hello and welcome to our new offices. Two, I am very happy with the designs. Three, the design lives up to our expectations. 
Four, in the end, it all comes together. Five, my only complaint about the new one is that it is not modern enough. One, hello and welcome to our new offices. Two, I am very happy with the designs. Three, the design lives up to our expectations. Four, in the end, it all comes together. Five, my only complaint about the new one is that it is not modern enough. The formula behind detective stories on TV. Detective stories have always been a favorite in literature, and now they are one of the most popular genres in TV films and series. There is something appealing about the mystery and intrigue that captivates viewers and keeps them in suspense until the case is finally solved. But what accounts for the phenomenal success and enduring popularity of detective stories? Is it the charismatic and fearless hero and his uncanny ability to uncover the truth? Is it the action and adventure, the high-speed chases, danger, and exotic settings? Is it the psychological wit and high-tech gadgets that the detective has at his disposal? Or is it the simple fact that the viewer knows the hero will triumph over the villain in the end? Clearly, the TV audience enjoys the mystery and non-stop suspense of detective films. However, ironically, there is also predictability to the story that is tremendously appealing. Certain elements and sequences of events appear over and over in detective stories and are eagerly awaited by fans. TV films and series with such predictable elements are known as formula films. The TV audience knows the plot will be puzzling and sometimes have unexpected results. They know the hero will confront dangerous villains. They know there will be complicated steps involved in piecing together all the clues, and they are challenged to try to figure out the mystery before the detective. The most basic element in the formula of a detective story is the hero, the detective. This is the character the viewer identifies with throughout the film. He is usually a courageous individual with superior intelligence. He is often charming and outgoing, which helps him socialize with others, while, in fact, he is collecting information from witnesses and gathering evidence for his case. Another type of hero is the gruff and serious detective, who rarely smiles but is very efficient at his job. In contrast, the hero in detective comedies is a naive and clumsy character who accidentally stumbles across clues to eventually solve the crime. Of course, the villain also plays a crucial role in the story. On occasion, the villain's identity is a mystery and is only revealed at the end, but more often he is introduced to the TV audience. Just as there are formulaic types of heroes, there are stereotypical villains, cold-blooded, greedy criminals, evil geniuses, and mad scientists. Most villains also have physical or psychological defects that add to the ugliness of their character, such as a scarred face, a missing limb, or a split personality. The detective is challenged to find the villain by following clues. To assist him, he uses special talents in intellectual reasoning or has help from technological devices. These range from a simple magnifying glass to sophisticated DNA analysis and electronic tracking devices. Some detectives even use high-tech gadgets that are disguised as everyday objects, such as an explosive pen, a laser watch, or a computerized talking vehicle. When the hero confronts the villain, there are always scenes of action and danger. These involve high-speed chases on any kind of vehicle imaginable, Cars, motorcycles, helicopters, speedboats, skis, submarines, camels, or simply on foot. If the detective is captured, 
He finds himself in life-threatening situations and must use his skills to escape. He is then even more determined to catch the villain. One way or another, the detective always accomplishes his mission, much to the satisfaction of the audience. The formula for detective stories is so successful, it is hard to imagine that it will ever be significantly altered. After all, who wants to watch a detective story without action and adventure, or in which the villain wins? Main Genres of TV Films Film genres are categories of films based on theme, setting, plots or stories, characters, and other specific features, such as special effects, computer enhancement, animation, etc. There are major genres and subgenres. For example, adventure and action films are quite well known and associated with popular heroes, such as Superman or the Rambo sequels. It is not always easy to classify films as they often combine elements of different genres. Kung Fu Panda, for instance, is an animated film which can also be categorized as an action film. This is the reason why some films are listed in different categories or a category that is more popular at a given time. Film genres evolve through time. Action films featuring martial arts specialists and superhuman heroes used to be very popular over a decade ago. They still exist, but they seem to have lost their initial appeal. If a film includes action and is filmed in tropical settings, is it an action film or an adventure film? Would you say that Toy Story belongs to animation as a genre or comedy? Is it more of one or the other? And if so, which? Detective films are developed around stories of criminal actions and include elements of mystery and suspense. Dramas, on the other hand, are serious films portraying realistic life situations, character development, and interaction. They include a number of subcategories, for example, melodramas, biographies, or biopics. Epics are usually costume dramas, historical dramas, or war dramas in extravagant settings and lavish costumes. They are sometimes a more spectacular version of a biopic film, such as The Last Emperor. Horror films are designed and produced to frighten audiences. They are sometimes combined with science fiction, when, for example, Earth is invaded by an alien monster. Science fiction films, on the other hand, are often visionary with futuristic technology and extraordinary creatures from outer space. One of the most famous examples of this genre is E.T., War films portray the horror and destruction of war and are often combined with documentary excerpts. They are also paired with other genres depending on the story, for example, action, adventure, drama, comedy, etc. Finally, westerns represent one of the oldest genres with easily recognizable plots, elements, and characters, including horses, dusty towns, Indians and cowboys, good and bad guys, a sheriff and deputies, etc. In other words, they follow a common formula which has been modified, developed, expanded, supplemented, and revisited over the years. If you look up film genres in different sources, you will find that they share some categories but not others. Once again, this is quite natural, given the evolutionary nature of film genres and changing trends in popularity that reflect overall social and financial trends.